It leads to frustration and inner turmoil when you compare yourself and a feeling of unworthiness. And when you do feel worthy, it only lasts for a short time because there's always somebody who comes along who has attributes that you don't have. And I want to talk to somebody today who has constantly been miserable and insecure and uncertain about who you are and you don't know your place and you don't know your status and you don't know your role and you're always shifting and you're always wavering and you're always uncertain, often envious, often jealous, often unsure because you don't know who you are. You don't know your role. You don't know your role. And you can't be happy within yourself until you know your role. Because if you don't know your role, you're only good till somebody better comes along. And when somebody better comes along, you're intimidated. And when you're intimidated, you become aggravated. When you become aggravated, you frustrate your environment because you don't know your role. You don't know, I'm the one who Jesus. You don't know where you fit, who you are, where you stand. The people who became the most successful in our society are people who broke the rules. You know, there was no presidents for 24-hour news cycles until Ted Turner did it. There's so many people who got out of the box. Uh, look at Apple and the birth of the whole notion of Apple or Nike, I talk about in the book, and the birthing of that corporation, how they did something with the tennis shoe that had never been done before. If you only base your decisions on empirical data, you can only repeat what somebody else already did. If you follow your instincts and your own God-given creativity, we could go where we have not been before. Comfort is the cage. We used to be pioneers. That's how the country was settled. And, and we stopped pioneering new things. We, we stay where it's comfortable. We play where it's safe. We, we, we don't really get out into the wild of the possibilities. We stay in the confined cage of, of that that is uh, tangible and touchable. Nine to five and that's it. But we need more creativity and we need to follow our instincts. Now, without that, you, you may make some money, but you won't find fulfillment. Since we're talking about business, we're talking about money. You can't be tribal and be a global thinker at the same time. The reason money is called currency is that it needs to be able to flow. And the issue is, do you have a vision that flows beyond people who look like you, dress like you, and vote like you? Then, then when people are filled with self-centeredness, they can't wait. They can't wait. They've got to have it now. They have no strategy. They have no plan. They're not willing to wait. They're not willing to delay. Other people will send one of their kids to school and then the other one will get a college degree and they'll send the other ones to school and little by little they'll pull themselves along. But when people cannot wait, the moment you start reaching up too high, they'll grab you by your ankles to pull you down because jealousy is so pervasive. But we have a God who thinks collectively. He thinks generationally. He thinks in terms of kingdom. He has a divine purpose and an overall strategy. Our God is a mind. He's an intellect. He's a strategist. I, it, it's not enough for you to understand that God is powerful because power without strategy is dangerous. It's explosive. It's lethal. But when you take power and you channel it within the course of strategy, it becomes functional. It becomes energy. It becomes life changing. It's not enough to know that God has power if he has no plan what good is power I'm excited to have this opportunity to spend a little time talking with you. Uh, really, my particular session, I want to really tie into something that, that I think is very, very important as it relates to success, and particularly as it relates to leadership that I think is going to be beneficial to you. I uh, thank my host for the invitation to bring me here, and uh, I look forward to spending a good few minutes with you, challenging you. The funny thing about it is because I want to talk to you about change. And the one thing that you can count on is there will always be change. And if you don't plan on the change as a leader, that will determine how successful you are. Whether it is good change or bad change, there will always be change. And generally, there will be both. Throughout longevity, most people never have a straight ride up a hill, even though their bio says it does. How many of you know that the bio is a lie? <laughs> it, it doesn't have everything in it. The resume only has the good things in it. It tells you about the peaks. It doesn't tell you about the valleys. The accomplishments it doesn't tell you about the failures. But you learn as much from your failures as you do from your successes. The strong hand rules the roost. Do you have the courage? It takes courage to be successful. It is far easier not to be successful. Misery will always have company. Success breeds contempt. If you don't want to make waves, be mediocre, be normal and fit in. And if you're more concerned about people than neutralize everything he put in you, just fit in with everybody else, 
dress like them, walk like them, act like them, eat like them, go where they go, think like they think, do what they do. And once you've neutralized your uniqueness, you don't need courage. It takes courage to be different. If we would go from doing 80% of things that are busy but not effective and 20% of the things that are really effective, if we would switch those numbers around and only give 20% of our time to the things that we have to do and 80% of our time to the thing that we were created to do. Number one, you have to own your own happiness. Uh, take it away from other people demanding that they make you happy. Your kids are not going to make you happy. Your spouse is not going to make you happy. A big house is not going to make you happy. Own your own happiness and be responsible for doing those things that bring joy into your own heart, independently of life and people and money and all of that stuff. Right. It doesn't necessarily give you a happiness. You have to take responsibility of that peace and that joy that lives inside of your heart and not inside of your stuff. What people need to do is challenge their own story because people torment themselves by how they see their life. They've told themselves a story as if it were the truth when it is really a perspective truth. And sometimes you've narrated a story that you beat yourself to death with. Challenge your own story. Change the way you talk to yourself about who you are and what happened to you and what you're going to do in your life. You, you wrote the script. Change the story. That I think is very important is to enjoy the journey, not the destination. A lot of us delay our happiness. When I get to this level, when I get my degree, when I get the kids, when I get married, I'm going to be happy. In Enjoy the journey, enjoy the whole step, the whole process, every day that you get up to strive for whatever it is you're after. You know I'm a goal-oriented. Don't celebrate when you get to the finish line, celebrate all along the way. Now, the term steps implies process, means it's gonna take a while, means that you can't get to the destination just because you want it, just because you saw it, just because you like it, just because you need it. In fact, we are often tormented by vision. It's a painful thing to be a visionary because a visionary sees what shall be and wakes up to deal with what is. Because every time I shout and dance over what you showed me, I go home to a harsh and painful, bleak, dark reality and the fact that I am torn between what shall be and what is creates agony in my life. The, but I can't go as fast as I would like to go, but I'm kind of inching my way in toward my purpose and my destiny, and I'm trying to dodge the storms. There are, there's a point in your journey with Christ that he will allow you to dodge the storm. Yet protecting you from a real experience, he insulates you in a safe place and allows you to avoid storms that would terminate you had you experienced them earlier. That's why you ought not be jealous of other people and critical of other people rather and say, you know, look at her and what she's going through. Maybe we can use the wind to blow us into our purpose. Gentle storms moving you slowly into the purpose saying maybe I can use this to move me toward where I'm supposed to go. And, and yet Paul had the vision that the storms are going to get worse. He had the vision that the storms are going to get worse. They do not listen to him because he is not in a position to lead.